we're going to start by building a very, very basic, um, almost like a monopoly house, a little boy, a little dog kennel, like this. So, I am going to create a new design. First of all, you've got to make sure you're logged in. Um, you can log in with a Google account or you can log in with Facebook. But for us, we'll log in with, um, with our Google accounts. We um, Everything starts on a work plane. The work plane is flat, like a flat surface, but we're going to build 3D objects on top, above or below this work plane. Um, we've got various things we can do. We can rotate around using this thing here. We just grab on a corner or grab on any part of it, and we can move it from um, around and around. Click on faces, and that moves it around as well. But then we've also got the home button, which defaults to here, or a perspective view, which sort of shifts through the different views. I'm going to put this put this on a bit of an angle. So leave the work plane. If if we know we're the right way up, if if we can read the word work plane, um, if we can't, we might be underneath and upside down. So I've got the top view. This is a top view. I've angled it slightly, as you can see, and you can read the word work plane. So that's this side, okay? So we've got zooming in and zooming out, home so we can see everything. This one here, um, whatever we've we've clicked on, um, depending on what we draw, we can zoom in. So if I drag a cube onto this work plane, like so, and I click on the home button, it will take me to that space there, okay? And I can put that into a spin if I don't want it. So I'm going to click back on the home, and we're going to start and build. Let's say we're going to start and build a little dog kennel. We're going to be using the basic shapes. We have got quite a, um, a repertoire of objects we can um, we can have in here, building various characters, um, electronic components, circuits, lots and lots of things. Okay, even furniture in there. But we're going to stick with basic shapes and they're what are called holes and these are used for putting holes inside objects and i'll show you that in a second first things first i'm going to click on the box and drag it onto the work plane and it will it will sit it will it will go it will default to being on top of the work plane if i move this around as you can see we are sat on the work plane um, but what have we got on in terms of this shape We've got a series of dots. We've got the height, control how tall it is. We've got other, if we click on any of the points from the corners, we can also alter the width, um, width, width and depth. Um, we'll work that way of uh, this object. So I'm going to click on that one. And in here, if I click, I can alter the size. Alternatively, um, if I click on this little arrow in this little shapes palette here, I can see these. I can alter the length, the width, and the height within this. I can also alter the color. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about the radius and the steps at the moment. We will come to those later. But we've, we've certainly we can use the width, the length, and the height. Um, but just to show you this, doing it this way, I am going to leave the this on 20, I'm going to leave the height on 20, but I'm going to make this 40. So it's going to, it's no longer going to be a, um, a cube, it's going to be more of a um, cuboid. Okay, so we've got 40 um, width that way, 20 depth, and 20 height. Let's have a look. Okay, and I can move around like so. In fact, I am going to make it slightly taller. I'm going to make this 30. Um, so again, what I can do, click on this, and I can type in 3-0 on the keyboard, and that brings it up like so. OK, so we've got an object. We did say we could change the color. We've got various colors in here, transparencies, multicolor. Yeah, and it's simply clicking on the button. Don't, I think all at the moment we can just change colors. We can't change, 
Unlike SketchUp or other 3D packages, you can't change this into materials. Um, well, why? Because the objects, this, this software is designed to work with a 3D printer. So we've got the various colors, the sort of default colors um, of, the, um, of the filaments that you get with a 3D printer. Make a hole. I'm going to punch a hole all the way through the bottom of this. Um, I can do this one of two ways. I can drag the box, like so. And that's my transparent shape. Or I can drag another box down. And at this point, I can change it between the two. Okay. But I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it on um, on hold. Hover over it, like it does tell me H is for hold. So I can press H on the keyboard, or I can press S. S sorry to make it do a solid shape. S and H to change the color around. Um, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit, clicking the minus tool, and I'm going to click on the right face to make sure I pull it down a little bit. In the middle, but I'm going to make this go all the way through the box. So at the moment that's 20, but if I make that 60, as you can see, that's gone all the way through the hole there. All that leaves me to do now, if I click on one of the items here, and then I click on the shift key on the keyboard, and I click on the other object, so I've selected both, it tells me there that two shapes have been selected. I can then use these tools up here and I can group that object. So now I have basically an archway. Okay. It only it only leaves me now to put a roof on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down here. Um, for this, I think I'm gonna choose the roof because that's what I showed you in the example. Again, I can drag that down to here. Now what we can see with this is the wrong way around. I want it so the triangle at the front is facing the front here. What I do have are these sort of half circles. If I hover over any of these and you can see they've, they've given this some, some kind of order of rotation. So if I click on this one here, I can drag that around until I get to 90. Again, I can go in and I could type that figure in if I wanted to. But I've rotated it around to 90. I've got that there. How high did I say that this was? It's 30. Perfect. What I can do again with this is if I click on the object, I've also got, so I've, I've mentioned the white dots. Um, I've mentioned the um, circles for doing rotations. But I've also got this little cone on the top, this little tiny cone here. Um, and if I click on this, on the cone, I can pull this up and down, off the floor, or under the floor. I'm going to pull this up so it is the same height as the object, which is 30. And I can just see that off camera there, like 30. Okay, click on that. Um, and now if we go on front view, I'm just going to pull it down a little bit. Like so, I can drag this over the top of my object, like so. I'm going to rotate it around again. So that's sort of there, but it's, of course it's far too small. So again, what I can do, I can drag that to the end of that one, and I can drag it to the end of this one. It should be 40. And there we go. So it's 40 by 20. Make this bigger or smaller as I see fit. Put it in 50. Okay. Click so I can zoom out. Change the different views. And pop it in place like so. And that is the very, very first lesson. That is the very, very basics to using objects, moving objects in um, Tinkercad. All it leaves me to do 
at the moment it gives it some kind of a very odd default name. Um, in this case, it's called Darling Ball Wool. Um, I can click on this and I can make it lesson one, zero one, and we'll call it um, basic. If I now click on the Tinkercad icon here, it takes me back, as you see, it takes, it's going to take me back to the Tinkercad dashboard. I click on this, down at the bottom here it says saving your work. So if it ever did crash, it would save your work, but you must be logged in. If you are not logged in, you have lost all your work. And there we go. On this other one, look, I've gone slightly over with the roof, with the whole time. This one is plush. And that is it. So thank you for watching. That is lesson one. Have a go at that and see how you get on. Thank you.